is another um, tutorial from Gav. What we're going to do here, this is the food brochure that's been supplied. You've been supplied the actual file plus a bunch of food images. You have not been supplied text for this one, so it's, the text isn't that important. You can use placeholder text, but it's really just about images and round corners and placing images and gradients, and there's quite a few things you'll learn in this. I won't draw the whole thing, but I definitely will draw enough that you can complete the exercise. Okay, so an A4 document in InDesign, straight up, okay, file place, alright, there is a file called food brochure, this one, so if you click on this one, if you click on the corner of your A4 document, drag down, okay, that's it, so what you do want to do when you draw anything with this document, it goes on a layer, okay, so that goes on its own layer, so this is called background, okay, and that, that'll, that'll come in, you'll, That'll be good, right? So what I do is I always make this opaque because as you're drawing stuff, it's much easier to see where your lines are. Lock that layer off. Make a new layer. This will be content. Okay. And off you go. So that's it. You're all ready to go now. So what we're going to do is we'll draw one of these little sections here and this circle. And from that, you'll be right to do the whole thing. So this is the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to draw this shape here. So we want the heading here, which is... It's all just done in boxes, okay? So this first box here, click on the tech on the box tool here, this one. So you're just going to draw a box to be this shape here. It's going to be round corners just in one corner. So if you go back to the selection tool, click on that yellow one and it gives you all these round corners. And you can click and drag that in and do round corners. But if you hold shift down on your computer, you can drag one in and you get a one cornered round box, okay? So that's that one. Once you've drawn that box, file place we've done this by now just for any image doesn't really matter so find an image go open and that will place into that thing so what happens is it will place in quite big remember this selection tool does the whole box and the direct selection tool or the bit in the middle will move the picture inside but if you click on the direct selection tool and what's really helpful is these things up here okay so you've got fill content proportionally so if I click on that it'll just fill the image down and then we can just scale that up to fit our box wonderful okay that that box has got a black outline around it I'm just going to click on that and just get rid of that next one's a text box straight up any box you can use you can use an empty box which is this one here so click from here so we're going to go from there drag down to that size and we just did this so click on that one click on the corner the yellow box hold shift down drag this in and you'll get round corners there. And this one is going to be a text box. So what we do, I've got some text here. Just use 8-point Helvetica light. It's fine. The fonts aren't, as long as it looks good, it's not about that. It's just about learning the programs. Okay, so I've just drawn a box there. If I click on the text tool, I can click in that box and convert that to a text box. So if I paste my text now, edit, paste, it'll just paste the text that I already had. Okay, that text is a white box. So swatches. I've got this selected, click on that. Okay, so that's now a white box with text in it. One, what you want to do now is you want to indent a bit to make it look like this stuff here. So what I'll be doing, okay, this is text frame options. So if you right click on that and say text frame options or command B does the same thing. So text frame option. So we hit preview so we can see what's going on and insert spacing, you watch what's going on here. Okay, so we bring that in a bit, that'll push it in a bit from the edge and look great. That's the box, okay? So we've got this this next heading, this one at the top. So again, just draw a box, okay? So I'm just literally doing it this by eye, just drawing a box, clicking on the round corner tool, holding shift down, grabbing that corner and bringing that one in and that one in, okay? We're going to be clever here and use the eyedropper. So I'm going to click on the eyedropper and click on this purple and it will convert that to purple. I'm going to put some text inside that box. Just I'll put this whatever the word is underneath here, which is Australian. I'm going to spell everything wrong. Gourmet Taste Kitchen. Okay. So we're just going to select all that text. I want that to be the same font as that. So the way, the way I can do that is I can use an eyedropper and click on that font and then go through and change the size a bit. I might make it already can you up here. Condense bold. Okay. And the first bit of it is already can you condensed. 
or light doesn't really matter I'm just kind of playing around with it so that's the first thing so we've got some text in there I want to select that text with my text tool I want to make that white we know that paper is white okay so we want to center that and go back to text frame options which is right click text frame options and we want to use this center this align here so I want to align that to the center and that will align it to the center of the box so that is how you do that box and if you are smart which I'm sure you all are what you would do instead of doing all that again you would select that one hold shift down that one and that one and then you go option shift on your keyboard you drag that down to the next box here okay and then you would just change this okay that that one you would use your links palette which is very helpful click on the picture go to links up here okay links palette this is my links this one here which is relink and I would relink that with this one and that's going to go in there I can click on the direct selection tool play around with that all right so it's a really good way to do that that's it basically pretty much these ones are the same you could probably select this one option shift this up to here you could either draw the box again or what you could do is you could use with the direct selection tool you could just grab the ends of those boxes and you could drag those across and drag that box across to here okay or you would just draw it again but so click on this one grab that space him out and that will come out to that full size okay so that's or you would just draw it again but it's all that's that's the the concept of InDesign is just using as much as you can this is quite easy this one just circles just placing circles so this one option shift from the center I want to get that big circle first okay file place you know how to do this one I've just drawn a circle I want that image there it's going to go into that circle okay direct selection just play around with it looks like it fits all right as it is that's one image okay oh, kind of of sort of roundabout way but we want to do these circles now so option shift I want I want the two small circles I should have cut the shape out first so there's that one I'm just going to give that a color just any color for now it's all about that option we're going to copy this one down to here and we want to cut this shape out of that shape this shape okay so this is using Pathfinder window object and layout Pathfinder okay so under the window drop down menu object and layout Pathfinder with two objects selected with that one and that one I want to use this one and I want to say minus front okay so if I say minus front it'll cut away that shape so this one and this one selected two objects selected minus front it's cut away that shape but what I should have done before I did that I should copy and paste one of these circles because I'll need it back to this one that one that one minus front using Pathfinder so then I want to put this guy back into there so I'm going to just put him into where he goes we know it's the right size because I just cut it out of that option will scale from the center down a bit okay a bit more up a bit so just a bit, a bit of space around this guy and so then the next one a picture so that one you've got the picture file place any one of your images I'm just picking random ones okay so this one into there we've placed the picture in remember we use this tool up here which is um, fit content proportionally clicking on the picture which is quite big so if I say fit content proportionally that will bring the picture down and I can scale up and down proportionately Right, I'm going to be smart here I'm going to use my links palette I'm going to copy this one that's already got an image into it into here just move it around a bit using my arrow keys use the links palette again over here okay oops so relink that one so hit relink find a different image and put that and that will go into there okay so that's 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 this one other thing we're going to do these these have got a background on there's a gradient in the background here so what I need now is I'm going to it's just a layer which has got a green and orange a blue and green gradient behind the whole job so back to my layer palette I want a new layer this layer will be called gradient so if you look at the original file it looks like these are nice these are colored boxes but they're not they're just transparent white so on the gradient layer I'm just going to draw a big box I'll just do half go across half of the thing for now okay so this one 
What we want here is we want a gradient palette open, which is this one, and you want the swatches palette open, which is this one. So inside of this job here, we want a gradient. So I just manu automatically put the black to white gradient in it. You've got lineal here, you've got radial. We want a lineal gradient. We want it to go from the top to the bottom. So you just place that one in. And what you do, we've got the colors in here we're going to use. So in my swatches palette, I want it to go from blue to green. So I'm going to grab this blue color and I'm going to drag it over the top of that little icon inside of here. Okay. So that blue has gone in there. And this black, that at the moment, it's blue to black. I want it to go from blue to green. So now we want green. So this green icon... I'm going to drag over here and drag it on top of that one and it goes from blue to green. And we, this is clever now. So we've got the gradient tool inside of the tool palette. So click on that tool. If you click on that gradient tool and just draw a line, it'll draw the gradient equivalent to that as to where you want it. So I go from the top to the bottom. It's going to give me a green, a blue down to green gradient. Okay. So with layers, that gradient is going to come underneath the content. So you can see how that's going. It's starting to look a bit like it should now. And the last thing I want to do is lock that gradient layer off because it's going to get in the way. And these boxes here, these white ones, I want them to be transparent white. There is a transparency here. And if I click on that transparency here and drag it down, it's going to make it all transparent. The white box plus the type. I don't want that. So what I want to do is go to Window, Effects, and this is quite smart. So under effects, there's you can make a great opacity of the stroke, the fill, and the text. So we just want the fill to be transparent, which is here. And I'm going to make that transparent. And you can see it looks wonderful. So that's giving the effect of the, the blue, the different colored backgrounds. Okay, so then that, and you can see I've got a bit, move him around a bit. So that then, so if I scale that down a bit, and if I d turn the background layer off, of the actual pattern with from that that's given you more than enough detail to be able to do these small boxes this box up here so if i turn the gradient one off this one off that's just a box same as this it's just a box with text in it and using the effects palette window effects you can make the background thing and your finished one will look something like that okay thank you